quick go ahead and get started. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for the special bicentennial discussion about the Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp. Bonjour tout le monde et bienvenue. My name is Dr. I'm a member of the Mohawk Nation from Ganawage. I'm a pediatrician by training and director of McGill's Indigenous Health Professions Program. Before we begin, I just want everyone to take a moment and just think about the land where they are at this moment and to acknowledge that we are all on land that has been long used by Indigenous peoples. I would like to acknowledge that McGill University is located on land that has long served as a site of meeting and exchange of Indigenous peoples. The Indigenous Health Professions Program honors, recognizes, and respects the Haudenosaunee as the traditional stewards of the lands on which the campus is located. I'm delighted to be here with you today to talk about the Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp, which was started back in 2005 by First People's House at McGill and by a really incredible community of Indigenous volunteers. Their hope was to find a way to get Indigenous youth excited about higher education through sport, Indigenous cultural teaching, and hands-on learning activities. This camp has evolved over the years to the current format of a one-week science enrichment camp for Indigenous youth. In the camp's 16-year history, it has helped inspire numerous youth to look at science from a different perspective. It's an approach that gives space to the traditional knowledge that is shared in our communities, while also introducing students to an experience at one of the leading universities in Canada. It helps to empower Indigenous learners to be the leaders of their own educational journeys, one that's adapted to their needs and learning styles. Today, you will hear from our panelists about how and why this camp got started and how it has grown. They know that story much better than I do, but what I do know is that initiatives like this are an essential component in empowering the young people from our communities and reducing inequities in education and healthcare. We feel strongly that our camp and the Indigenous Health Professions Program are parts of a larger solution to overcoming health discrepancies faced by Indigenous peoples. We do this by encouraging more Indigenous youth to pursue careers in science and the health fields, and by increasing Indigenous representation in the health professions. Today, we're going to hear from Winnie Corn Miller, who was one of the founders of the camp back in 2005. Winique, like me, hails from Gunawage, just outside of Montreal. She is a former Olympian, was co-captain of Canada's water polo team, and competed in the 2000 Sydney Olympics. She is a leading advocate for Indigenous sport and justice. We are honored to have you with us today, Winique. We will also hear from Paige Isaac, who is a member of the Mi'kmaq Nation from Listigouche, Quebec. She has also been a leader of the Eagle Spirit Camp, as she bravely took over the leadership of the camp after Winique moved on from McGill. Paige is a McGill graduate in biology who worked at the university for nearly a decade as the Indigenous Community Outreach Coordinator and then Associate Director of First People's House. She's now back home in Listigouche where she works in, in tourism and where she recently co-founded two Mi'kmaq-led community organizations. We're very happy to have you here with us, Paige. Lastly, we will hear from Alex Lard Gray, who, like Paige, is a member of Listigush uh, First Nation. Alex knows the camp very well, having started as a camper. In fact, he liked it so much, he came back to McGill as a student to study physiology and kinesiology and worked at the camp throughout his undergraduate program. He is now the outreach administrator with the Indigenous Health Professions Program and coordinates the Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp each summer. Thank you to all three for taking the time to be with us today. And so we can go ahead and get started. I will invite Winique Horn Miller to speak. Winique, over to you. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. It's nice to be uh, back sort of virtually at McGill. It's been a while. Um, but I just want to acknowledge that I am on the uh, traditional territory of the um, Algonquin people. And um, I am, you know, it's, it really is when, when I got first asked to um, 
be part of this and to to share how this camp was founded. It was, you know, and I started looking into um, looking into uh, these pictures and my memories. Uh, it was it's it been a super it was super emotional because. Um, you know, this camp, uh, Eagle Spirit, um, well, I was called High Performance Camp when I, when I uh, first started it. You know, it was born many years before um, and, and right into my childhood. You know, I, uh, I have an older sister who's a physician, and, um, but we were also athletes. My mom, um, single mom, uh, she put me and my sisters into sports and, and she put us into running and swimming. And she wanted us to learn some, some key, very important uh, skills that would help us go on to achieve uh, like things like perseverance and respect and achievement, all these things. She wanted us to learn that she knew that sports was the place to do that. And so whatever we decided to do, that we'd have these really um, strong foundational skills. And, you know, I think about what, uh, and watching my sister Ogisto uh, go through her, you know, even high school and in her undergrad, doing a master's in, in um, epidemiology and then going on to go to medical school. You know, I saw what um, that sport background was able to give her and, and how that perseverance and that really, you know, strong work ethic that she learned after 16 years of competitive swimming, how it helped her through medical school. And so, you know, I, you know, I didn't follow in her footsteps. I went to the Olympics and uh, that was my dream. And uh, I did get a university degree because uh, it was the only hook that I, the only reason why I wanted to go to university was because my mom said I had to if I was going to play on the national team. And here I thought I was going to be a millionaire water polo player. But uh, as uh, we all know, that doesn't happen in Canada. <laughs> so I am very lucky to have my university degree. And I'm, I'm really, really lucky to, uh, to have that you know, in my, in, and I'm also in doing my master's degree uh, as we speak in, in Indigenous Studies and Kinesiology at UBC. So where did this all begin? Um, you know, when I was at McGill and I, I was a coordinator at the First People's House, um, I was, I, I obviously wanted to, I wanted to do something different. I wanted, you know, after many years of traveling all over North America, speaking in communities, doing workshop in communities, um, I realized a lot of um, a lot of the programming was geared towards uh, youth at risk, and I um, I thought to myself, you know, I always remembered there were some kids in 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 the classes in the places I went, and I was one of those kids too that, you know, that our parents had done a really awesome job and getting us to that next level, you know, and I wanted to, to reward that. I wanted to cohort that. I wanted to bring them together from across um, Canada to come. And the hook was, you didn't have to be a high performance athlete. You just had to be an athlete. And so the hook was, you had to be an athlete and you had to be um, ready to do a half day of sports and a half day of, of science, because I also wanted to um, use sports as a hook to get them interested in um, health sciences like medicine and uh, and dentistry and nursing and and all that, so it was really um, uh, that was where it was founded. And I remember Lynn Fletcher and I, who uh, we like she was my uh, administrator, and uh, we looked at each other and said, "Are we going to do this?" And it was literally the two of us. We pulled in some of our, the students that were uh, at McGill at the time, and Paige was one of them, and Pamalu and. Um, I asked my sister, who was a, a practicing physician at the time, will she come and do this? She said, of course, of course, I'll come help you. And she volunteered her time. Her partner volunteered to be a, um, a camp counselor, Jamie Kirby. Uh, my little sister, who was in acting and theater school, got her and a bunch of her theater classmates to come in and uh and be camp counselors. So I started to draw in my, and my brother-in-law at the time was tied to the lacrosse team. So he, he reached out to the lacrosse coach and said, will you do some lacrosse with the play, with the athletes? And the lacrosse coach was absolutely, he was so excited. And so it's, it kind of grew like that. And I, I really believe it was the good medicine of the concept. The fact that it was something different, it was something fun, it was something really grassroots based, how we were all kind of excited to be together. And, um, you know, I, I remember the, the the first leading up to it, the, the amount of stress, like I, I, I think I, I broke out this big rash on my forehead because I was so stressed out. I remember that. And but it was it was so amazing because 
everybody from there's my uh, you see a picture of my now husband and my little sister um he went on to go to medical school as well this is when he was a personal trainer and i knew that this was going to be such an incredible opportunity for um for these kids so that first year um we were really lucky uh, uh i reached out to the Dreamcatcher fund and they sponsored. Uh, I knew a lot of these um, athletes weren't going to be local. Some of them were going to come from Ganawage, some were going to come from, different, but they weren't all going to be. So we needed to kind of financially help a lot of these athletes come if they couldn't get sponsorship from home. Uh, and we put them through the ringer and they all showed up. All of these youth, this is what you're seeing. I love that these pictures, they remind me of how engaged, how excited they were. Um, we had pretty good swag. I remember we got sponsored by the N7 fund from Nike, which I sit on their board, um, and these shirts. Um, we had them all into teams. I remember the team concept of like, where they, if they showed up on time uh, for breakfast and they, you know, all the stuff that they got points. And so it was really kind of, um, it was exciting. And we also um, reached out to different things like sports psychology. And, you know, we had so much of the McGill community show up for us, which really, really um, was an encouragement that this is the right thing. And there's Lynn Fletcher with her daughter who Lynn helped do all the cooking. So we basically cooked all the food at First People's House and brought it over. Um, and this really was um, a labor of love. And I have to say that um, to see Alex, well, uh, to know that Paige took it over and grew it, to know that Jessica Berudin took it over and even grew it even more, um, it is something that uh, has made me so proud, you know, and to see Alex now running it, this is exactly what I envisioned. I envisioned that this would grow and grow and to be something um, that people would stake a claim to, that they felt they were part of something, that they could find their place within McGill, that there was this strong indigenous um, vibe that we want you here and you can come to school here and we're here to support you. And so um, it is an absolute, absolute pleasure to know that it's been 16 years and now it's a week long. So this is just a little bit about how it started and, uh, and how happy I am. And you know what? I, I don't know if a lot of you know, but at the time uh, and, and for many years, it, I presented about the Eagle Spirit High Performance Camp to many conferences, and it was one of a kind across the country. This didn't exist anywhere else. And so, like I know so many people at McGill like to, to, <laughs> to be the first, and so we really were the first. And this is such a, uh, a stellar crew of many of these young campers have gone on uh, to become McGill uh, graduates. Uh, my nieces, my niece went on through uh, anatomy. I know Alex, so many others have gone on post-secondary and, uh, and do incredible things. And so a really great pleasure and a great honor to be able to found the Eagle Spirit Camp. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for sharing, Winique. And yeah, a lot of memories with those photos that were, uh, that were uh, rotating through there. So thank you so much. Uh, next, I will invite Paige Isaac to speak. Paige? Hi, everyone. Um, happy to have received an invite back to McGill as well, albeit virtual. Um, and nice to connect with the Eagle Spirit family. Uh, I was, yeah, you know, I was a camp, I was a student at the time, a McGill student and working at the First People's House, which became a, a second home to me. And, you know, I remember helping out Winique in one of the early camps that I, I don't remember if it was the second or third one. I was a camp counselor, so, you know, so I kind of got the lay of the land, got to experience what the camp was about and feel all of the energy. And then, you know, once I graduated, I became the outreach coordinator. So then I found myself on the road traveling to all, you know, to all the different, um, hey, Gaguila, oh, nice to see you. Um, you know, I got to, yeah, travel around to all the different Indigenous communities and talk to them. You know, I think the camp was 
one thing that I talked about the most because it was a big draw, right? It was like a step in. It was an, you know, come see us, come see what we're all about. We have this camp and, um, you know, so I, that's kind of what I remember doing in my early days. And, you know, it was so cool to see all of the support from the McGill community, our Indigenous students, alumni, you know, who are, have went on to be professionals. You know, we had um, Greg Frazier, who was a, who's a Anishinaab. No, he's Mohawk too, I think, yeah, from Six Nations. And, you know, he's an orthodontist or some sort of professional dentist. And so he would come back and he was also into sports. And, you know, everyone was just so excited. I think the camp counselors, oh my God, I could not have done this camp without the camp counselors. And it was so cool to see them so dedicated, their patients, you know, we had a, we had um, like probably two camp counselors for each team, right? So every, every year we had 30 youth from across Canada come between 12 and 17. We had a bunch of teenagers um, come to campus and, you know, offer this really cool experience. They stayed at new residence, so they got to see what it was like to live in a dorm room. We tried to mix them up with different people. And so they would room with someone from another community. We were really trying to build um you know get them out of their comfort zone and expose them to different things right so I remember yeah like the I think basketball and lacrosse were like the biggest sports played and the teams were you know the were really really into it but we would also introduce different things every year like capoeira and inner tube water polo um kickboxing and and yoga and like do a lot of different different things with them as well this is a photo of us on, up on Mount Royal. So I have lots of memories with all of the youth running up Mount Royal. Like we would make it a race. <laughs> so I remember with, you know, a couple of volunteers going up early and like bringing water and snacks and, and walking up those stairs to try to get to the top of the mountain before everyone, make sure everyone had, you know, a snack afterwards. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, so I have really lovely memories of that. Um, oh, geez, you know, and I think when I joined too, I started to, you know, obviously there was a really good framework for the camp that, that Winnie had, and then I started making my own spin on it. And, you know, every year we would survey the youth too, and, you know, they would, they would give their feedback. And so I remember trying to, uh, incorporate different things. And so with me, I think, you know, I don't know, I brought McGill Law in, and they would do case studies with the youth. We did wilderness medicine, engineering. Um, I think we even went to Mac campus one year and we learned from the bio resource engineering team and the faculty of music, I think was a part of it for maybe one or two years. Like we, I was trying to experiment with a lot of different things. For me, I thought it was really cool for you know, and I think medicine has always been a part of it. They were like our number one partners, but, you know, it was really cool to, you know, just kind of expose them to different, different fields and, and integrate some cultural and social activities, you know, like a lot of these youth, sometimes they would come in groups of people. Like I know when I would send out the invite to Listigoch, there would be a group of, of Listigoch youth and um, but then some of them, you know, they might have been the only ones from their community, right? So they would come in super shy, like staying in their own bubbles and not really talking to anyone. And, you know, it was a three day camp every May long weekend. It was a May, yeah, three day camp. And by the, you know, the end, like this, maybe the second to last, last day, like they didn't want to go home. They were making friends and they were all out of their shells because I think, you know, a lot of the workshops that we did were very uh, dynamic and got them engaged. And we really tried to kind of get them, you know, learning from each other and, and um, yeah. And so, yeah. And they were like, I think it was even them who said like, this camp should be a week long camp. <laughs> so that's probably why it's a week-long camp now they just they really really loved it and you know I I have a lot of them on Facebook now and you know getting getting to see what they're up to they're you know a lot of them went to university and college and are leading in their communities and they have families now <laughs> um, and it's just really cool to see you know see them just doing well and to be have those connections and to be like you know I 
we have that that shared experience in in Montreal at this wild eagle spirit high performance camp. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, and really like there are so many people to thank um, who made this camp possible and. You know, it'd be lovely to have some sort of reunion one year. I don't know, that would be really awesome. But, you know, I have some really interesting memories of, I don't know, having to, to take a kid to the hospital, <laughs> you know, like being, I think, I don't know if it was just like heat exhaustion or something, you know, campers running loose, um, sleeping through my alarm and kids missing their flights and trains because they would have like really early early flights that was just you know and you know you're up all night you're not really sleeping much and so yeah having to deal with things like that that was fun um yeah and just like you know I was always super super impressed with the youth like the amount they 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 tried they gave they shared um, I learned a lot from them and yeah, like I was just so, I don't know, I just remember having that feeling that I was just like so impressed with them and I knew that they were gonna, you know, be leaders in their community and I was happy to be a part of, you know, just like a small part of their young lives. And <laughs> um, super happy to, um, that the camp continued. I remember at the end kind of being like, okay, someone needs to take this over, you know, like I think I was, it was a lot. And I, I was so thankful for Jess, who Jess Berudin, who was a student at the time and, you know, was a yoga instructor, physiotherapy student, um, and was really keen to, to take it on after me. And so we had a bit of a transition and she brought in a lot of cultural, cultural elements. I remember one year we did, we did a big talking circle one night with the whole group. It was quite intense, but I think that was quite an experience um, just to hear hear from the youth and and know that healing was happening and um you know re I think she was the one yeah she was the one who rebranded it into the academy and brought it more of a the science focus back because it does it makes sense you know we we need more health health science students in our in our and professionals in our community so it definitely makes sense uh, to have that focus and um so yeah just truly uh, excited to like, yeah, share a little bit about the evolution of the camp and super excited that, yeah, Alex came as a counselor, or no, a, a camper, counselor, senior counselor, student, now running the camp. Like, that's just like an amazing, amazing example and, and super, uh, that's it. I'll stop that. I'll stop there. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thanks so much, Paige. Uh, yeah, so some things I didn't know. I, I actually didn't know, Paige, you were involved as a student uh, and, uh, and a counselor for a while. So th that's great for me to, uh, to learn about. And uh, yeah, and I, what you mentioned about having to bring someone to the hospital, it brings back memories of our, our last camp that we were able to do in person. And uh, gee, I guess they're not having fun unless, uh, unless we got to bring someone to the hospital, right? <laughs> there are... They're kids. But thank you so much, Paige, for sharing. Uh, next, I would like to uh, invite Alex Allard Gray to uh, share his story. Alex? So, um, first off, thank you, uh, my fellow panelists, for uh, sharing your stories. You know, seeing the photos, I think, and being able to really reflect on, you know, how Eagle Spirit has affected me, you know, as a person. Um, been a welcoming experience to be able to do that before I speak myself. Um, I realize actually, as I've been sitting here, um, my first exposure to Eagle Spirit was when I was 14 years old. Uh, I just started high school. I was in grade nine. Um, and as uh, was mentioned by Paige, a lot of us uh, students who wound up coming to the camp um, were very, very uh, prominent basketball players. We all enjoyed playing basketball. And I think hearing the idea that this camp was very much had a focus on sports was something that drew a lot of us in. And, um, you know, I'm realizing like 14, like I'm 28 years old. So literally half of my existence has been involved with this camp. And, um, you know, that, that just, I kind of sat with that for a moment, but all that to say, um, in that first year of my high school, I was having a bit of a rough time. I can remember, um, you know, uh, where I'm from, we have a school in our community that goes until uh, secondary because we don't have an English school. 
um, not on the reserve, but also in our own province. So we have to go to uh, New Brunswick. And, um, you know, when you've kind of spent your childhood being amongst your own people, you know, learning with people from your own community, um, being taught by people from your community, when you're kind of thrown into a different system, it can be a bit of a transition. And um, I can remember struggling academically. I seemed to do pretty well in school when I was um, uh, in primary school. But once I switched over to secondary, I was having some issues. I think I was having trouble kind of figuring out um, where I stood. You know, did I did I like academics? Um, was a, was I good at academics? And one of the things that I realized, you know, by attending this camp was, yes, the focus was on sports, but there was a large emphasis on this idea of, you know, pursuing post-secondary education, seeing what was out there. You know, I share this photo here. And I share this often in, when I, uh, in my job, when I do my outreach presentations, because I think this was one of the moments, and uh, I do look a bit different, but um, I'm the, the, the camper right there with the Nike t-shirt on, and um, I think it was in this moment that I really started to, you know, understand that not only did I have an interest in one day perhaps going to post-secondary education, but that by being in a cohort of students from all across Canada, you know, as much as we were athletes, we were all very much kind of like revolving and bouncing off of each other's interest. Um, I made it real. I made it a realistic, attainable thing for me. And I can remember going back to school and I, it helped me find my stride. I started to, you know, excel a lot more in my classes. I started to pay attention, show my interest. And I think that was maintained by continuing to stay involved in this camp. No matter what I would have been going through at high school um, or in life in general, this camp has really been something for me. It's, it's really ingrained itself into my identity as an Anu and as a, as a human being. I think too, you know, when I, uh, it was one of the reasons why I wanted to come into McGill was because I had felt so welcomed by this experience. You know, being invited to, you know, applying, but being, you know, accepted and invited to come back year after year, McGill very much started to become a home away from home for me, especially places like First People's House, thanks to Paige. And it really would be the thing that I would be looking forward to. It was like, no matter what I would be going through, you know, academically with stress, you know, with personal things, this camp was a moment to ground myself. And I've always held on to that because, you know, I look back at it at like my, uh, you know, my time at McGill or in high school. And I know it wouldn't have been the same experience had it not been for this camp. This is one of the reasons why I was able to, you know, finish my education, choose to continue going through my education. And this has kind of stuck with me, as I said, like throughout, you know, my time in university and now coordinating the camp. Um, I think one of the most beautiful things for me is now that, you know, I've gone from the stage of being a camper once to now receiving campers, you know, going through their applications, you know, accepting them, welcoming them here, putting them into their own teams. I get, it's a really humbling experience, I think, because I can look at those campers and I see reflections of my younger self in them. And that makes me want to make sure that, you know, they get something from this camp that'll affect them in a positive manner, you know, when they go back home, when they go back to school. And it's just been a really beautiful thing to think about because, you know, the camp has evolved throughout the years and it's taken on different things. But it's definitely kept, I think, that essence of being a community. I managed to meet a lot of people through this, um, you know, while I was a camper and so on. And, you know, Paige mentioned earlier this idea of an Eagle Spirit family. And I use that term uh, loosely, you know, when I'm communicating to, you know, our cohort or like our uh, past campers. But there's some truth in that. This camp builds family. This camp builds a community. And then, you know, something as scary as going into post-secondary when you're coming from a small community, wherever that may be. Being able to use, you know, your experiences in something like this to help you, you know, make your decisions and to also make you feel welcomed in an environment, especially something as large as McGill. I, I definitely not only appreciated that, but that's been kind of one of my driving forces in, um, you know, wanting to stay involved with this camp. I want these students to feel, you know, that welcoming as well. 
And, um, you know, in terms of saying thank yous, you know, there's been a lot, but honestly, like in terms of coming into the role as, you know, a co-coordinator, um, I have to thank Jessica really heavily. Um, you know, she was the one that I think, uh, you know, helped me you know, land my job after I graduated from my program, um, knowing, you know, the involvement that I had with the camp. And I think, you know, I, I really appreciated the notion of being able to, you know, not only help the camp, but also to learn from Jess. I think, you know, and that's also with you, Paige, I think that first year I coordinated it as a student. I've been able to learn from some really great people and, you know, what this camp not only means to them, but, you know, the visions and the, you know, the dreams that they had for it. And I hope that, you know, as, you know, we mark down more years with this camp initiative, that it continues to grow and that we continue to, you know, change kids' lives because that's what it's all about. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing, Alex. And uh, as you were talking, it, it was what really struck me. You know, I'm a pediatrician and I have visited many indigenous communities in Quebec and actually in other parts of the country as well. And just how much of a challenge it is for indigenous youth to go on and pursue post-secondary education. And that might not be obvious for all of our listeners out there but it is such a challenge to, to you know, move beyond the high school level and go, whether it's Sajap or college or university. And, and that's something we're really trying very hard to overcome. And that's one of the, the, the biggest the goals of the camp is just give those students and those youth the idea that, yeah, they can do it. They can come here. Look, there are some other people here and they should have every opportunity as everyone else does. So uh, thank you for sharing. That really drove it home for me, Alex. Okay, so um, we, uh, one, one quick thing, um, Wanique Horn Miller uh, initially was scheduled to remain with us, but she has so many things going on that uh, she, uh, and she got pulled into something else. So she unfortunately did have to uh, leave us for another, uh, um, another Zoom call, I think that she's doing another program. And so unfortunately she won't be here for questions, but we will be opening up the floor for questions in just a few minutes. And if you do have a question, please feel free to post your questions for our panelists in the chat. But first we thought this would actually be a great opportunity to premiere our new video uh, about the Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp which was filmed in 2019. Uh, unfortunately, this was the last time we were able to hold it in person. Uh, the camp unfortunately got canceled last year. We're doing a little something different this year. And we hope to be back in 2022 in person. But I will ask uh, our program manager, uh, Sadaf, to go ahead and queue up the video. And it's about five minutes. So we're gonna watch what happened in 2019. Eagle Spirit Science Futures is a one-week-long health and sciences camp for Indigenous youth. Hosted by McGill University's Indigenous Health Professions Program in the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences. The camp aims to encourage young Indigenous people between the ages of 13 and 17 to reach their full potential by enrolling in post-secondary education and pursuing a career in healthcare. I want to show you guys a quick video which is kind of like an introduction to what's happening. Over the course of the week, students are given a broad overview of health sciences professions in the form of in-class lectures and hands-on activities, both in classrooms and in the field, with a particular focus on healthcare in Indigenous communities. Keep in mind you're dealing with a living organism that was once had a life. Classes and workshops are largely taught from an Indigenous point of view, with a strong emphasis on traditional teachings and guiding principles that will feel familiar to students. In the laboratory, students are introduced to different areas of science, such as anatomy, chemistry, neuroscience, and climate science. Each year, the curriculum is built upon a central theme. The theme this year was climate change and climate crisis. It's something that uh, really hits home for a lot of Indigenous communities because in our traditions and our way of life, that's our utmost responsibility. The anatomy lab gives students the chance 
to learn about the inner workings of the human body, with the opportunity to examine in close-up detail different organs, bone structures and joints, and how all of this fits and functions together as a whole. With just the tip of the knife, we're going to go under the skin and we're going to look at uh, the gill structure. Armed with a few culinary instruments and a microscope, students will work together to discover the relationship between animal anatomies and the human body and explore our deep connections with the natural world. Workshops and activities also encompass vitally important healthcare disciplines, such as physical and occupational therapy and nursing. As well, students will participate in an introductory medical skills workshop and try their hand at life-saving skills, such as how to correctly draw blood from a patient, as well as perform everyday dental procedures, such as creating dental impressions and all of this performed safely on high-fidelity medical mannequins and models within a university setting. So today what we're going to do is we're going to do a agree-disagree exercise. So the camp also provides an opportunity for open discussions on mental health. There was a lot more than just you involved as well. It was also them and so many things that you can't control and that they couldn't control. <laughs> A large component of the program is dedicated to being out on the land. Opportunities for students to step out of the classroom for a breath of fresh air, unplug, switch off, and reconnect with the natural world around them. It's a chance for students to relax and socialize together, make new friends and have fun, while practicing their team building and communication skills. After a full week of activities, Cultural programs such as yoga and dance workshops offer a welcome opportunity to relax and rejuvenate and re-engage with Indigenous culture and customs. The camp is open to students in grades 7 and 8 who are invited to apply by completing a form on the IHPP website. As well as offering 15 spots for younger students, the camp also welcomes older students in grades 9 through 11 to enroll as camp leaders, acting as mentors and role models to their designated group. Seaship level students aged 17 and 18 are invited to participate as junior counselors, providing valuable support to the camp leaders, helping to facilitate the learning of the young students. Finally, university level students are invited to enroll as senior counselors, with responsibilities ranging from organizing teams of students managing the health and safety of their participants, problem solving, and promoting respectful conduct among campers. Thanks to the, to the bird life and all the different kinds of birds, right? To the great eagle that flies above our heads and to the two suns, to the winds. With the present health crisis facing indigenous peoples and the growing shortage of healthcare workers within these communities, now more than ever, we need to encourage young people to take up the challenge by revealing the opportunities that lay before them as healthcare providers, in order to bring much needed assistance to their communities. Recognizing too, the difficulties encountered when transitioning between indigenous and Western education systems, the Eagle Spirit Science Futures Camp strives to alleviate such hardships and common misconceptions and show students that there is a place for them in post-secondary institutions, that there are people and programs who understand their struggles and who want them to succeed. Well, that gives you some idea of uh, what we do at the camp and uh, just seeing the video uh, really brought back lots of memories from just a few years ago. Uh, and I just wanted to thank uh, everyone from the uh, Alex and uh, staff uh, for helping to put that all together. And Alex, a great job of narration on that video. So thanks to the whole team for putting that all together. Now, we are very excited about this year's Eagle Spirit Camp, um, which uh, following consultation with our community partners, we have decided to hold virtually for 2021. So we will not be welcoming students on campus this year. Next year, yes, but for this year, uh, each camper uh, will register and they will get a kit 
uh, containing many things, including a uh, lab coat, stethoscope, and other materials, along with a USB key that will have instructional recordings on there. And we've tried our best to capture the same type of teachings and activities on video for all the campers. So at their leisure over the uh, um, summer months, they will be able to look at all of those videos. And we've tried to make them as interactive as possible. So for example, we do have some uh, instruction about how to do some suturing. Now they're not gonna do suturing up in their community, but they're gonna maybe learn how to do some um, uh, specialized type of knots uh, with, with laces. And, and we have many other activities like that. And we're sure the kids are gonna have a lot of fun and learn a lot. And we are now accepting registrations for the 2021 Eagle Spirit Camp. So those of you who are in the communities and know youth who might be interested, uh, please spread the word to families in your communities. And the registration link is there on the screen in front of you. Prior to taking some questions, I would like to highlight a few important people who have been involved with the camp over the years. You know, there have been so many people who have contributed, it's hard to name them all individually, but I did want to highlight a few and others are recognized on this slide and on the next slide as well. But first, I wanted to definitely highlight uh, Ms. Jessica Barudin. She is the former IHPP program manager who was instrumental for many years with the camp and very instrumental in the transformation of the camp from the weekend format to the full week format. So thank you very much, Jessica. And I can't uh, thank Jessica without thanking uh, her husband who was a great support to her as well. So thank you, Vince. Um, I would like to also uh, highlight Mike Dybo, who is our, our instructor uh, for the science curriculum. And you saw him uh, in the uh, video there. So thank you, Mike, we could not do this without you. As Wanique mentioned, uh, Lynn Fletcher, uh, who was involved in the organization of the very first camp, and so we want to highlight her as well. Charmaine Lynn is a former director of admissions at the medical school and has been a strong supporter of the camp. And finally, I don't think his name is on this one, uh, but uh, Ojustagana, Mr. Charlie Patton, elder from Ganawage, who we did see in the video as well. Um, his contribution has been invaluable as part of the planning committee, and he does lots of activities with the campers during the, the in-person camp. So a big thank you uh, to those people. And on the two slides that we've had here, there are so many other people. A big thanks to everyone uh, who has been involved with the camp. There's been so many people, and just seeing the names bring back lots of memories. So without further ado, I'm going to do my best to monitor the chat here for some questions. Um, and I did see a question here about the deadline for the camp. And our deadline, I believe officially is, um, officially is May 16th for the deadline. Um, and, but you know what, if we get some names and registrations after that date, we, we are going to reach out to those youth. We are not going to restrict that. And this is going to be a great resource that we are developing that we can use for the future as well. So please uh, feel free to share this with your youth, check out the website. And if for whatever reason, if they cannot sign in on the website, uh, we, we have a phone number there as well that uh, people can reach out to. Okay, I'm going to do my best to look through uh, for some other um, questions. And it looks like most people were just very impressed with the video, which uh, is definitely uh, the case for me as well. Um, okay, so we do have a question here. Uh, this one will be directed towards our program manager. Um, we have uh, Heidi Lefebvre who's stating that the uh, works in a remote community in Nunavik and the internet is too weak to see the video and uh, she would like to have the link sent. So I'm hoping Sadaf, you will be able to uh, do that for um, Ms. Heidi Lefebvre. Hi, Heidi, we actually know each other. We used to work together once. I will send it to you. Okay. And uh, there is another question here. Is there anything uh, that the wider McGill community can do to help support the camp? Um, I will actually direct that to our panelists. Alex or Paige, any thoughts on that? Uh, 
I think for one, um, definitely getting the word out. I think um, one of the things about Eagle Spirit is that it's always been very grassroots. You know, we, we've put out whatever we could to communities, um, you know, to organizations, people that we work with. But the reach is as strong as, you know, the people that we're partnered with and the people who, you know, help us along the way. That's, you know, something else that, you know, people deserve a thanks is the many families and parents, teachers, and, you know, just general community members who have really helped get this out there. And so if there's something that the general kind of wider McGill community could do, it's to help spread it, the word to anybody you know who, you know, might work in an Indigenous community, if you have Indigenous colleagues, so on and so forth, yes. Yeah, I don't know if it's still the case too, but if you, you know, there is um, people wanting to be camp counselors. <laughs> I know that I remember that every year I was like, who wants to be a camp counselor? And, you know, definitely looking for people dedicated to, you know, stay the weekend with kids and or now it's like a week. So I don't know how you guys do it, but um, <laughs> um, I don't know, so, you know, requesting more support for the camp like when I when I was doing it I remember we were like running out of funding and like I was trying to think of like how to support the camp financially and so that might still be the case and so you know figuring out how to support it financially or even just like I you know access to different things on campus so whether it's like a you know I anyway you guys might have more I remember when I was when I was organizing it it was you know, ideas on what else, you know, what else can we highlight or is there like a different, a cool lab we can access, like, you know, just accessing resources and cool things at McGill that people can connect us with. That was always really great. I'm, I'm seeing another um, question here about how to get programs like this at other universities. And so it makes me think of a camp counselor that we had, Willow Fixon. She was a UBC student, but she would fly to the camp, like for several years, she would come to be a camp counselor and she was, had in her mind like we need this at UBC we need this at other universities and I think they did they they have their own so like a similar camp at, at the at UBC now so you know I mean the the framework is there other universities wanted to you know pick pick your brains about how to how to get that running at other universities I'm sure it's very possible <laughs> yeah yeah what I uh, what is um, a nice change that has happened across the country is most of these schools, medical schools especially, do have some type of Indigenous health program as well. And so they do have one, I, I know, at the University of Ottawa and at many other schools. So trying to engage with those offices to see if they would be interested in learning what we have done. We actually have learned a little bit about what they have done as well. So it's, it's always good to share that information. So thanks for that question. Uh, the next question is, do camp counselors who are either SEJAP or, in, or in undergrad necessarily need to have science or health backgrounds? And I'll ask Alex uh, his thoughts on that first. Well, that is a good question. Um, it does help in terms of, you know, the science teachings and uh, the classroom setting, but it's not required. You know, we, we, we understand that, you know, Indigenous students very much at the CJP level to um, you know, they still have to decide what they would like to do afterwards. And sometimes, you know, they might not be in a science program at that time. So no, if uh, there's an Indigenous student who is interested in, you know, learning about what kind of health opportunities exist out there, you know, at a university setting, um, or even just want to work with Indigenous youth, if they want to build kind of that leadership or those leadership skills, we will accept them. So no, they don't need uh, just to have a science background. Great. Thank, thanks, Alex. And I, I remember Mike Dibo saying, you know, it actually does help because the, the camp counselors do help with, with the science teaching right in the lab itself. So they're really hands on. But uh, I, I fully agree. Uh, it is not necessary. So thanks for that question. All right. So I don't see uh, any other questions. Anyone else who has a question, please feel free to, um, to put them into the chat. But uh, I, I had a a question that I'm hoping um, either Alex or Paige, uh, what your thoughts are on this. Um, what needs are do you think are being addressed through a camp like this? And so what's missing out there in Quebec and in Canada for the Indigenous youth? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, I think it was like, ex 
you know, not every community will have an Indigenous doctor in their communities, you know. So I think access to mentorship, seeing people in these roles who, you know, might have had a similar background or experience or upbringing than you and um, getting to hear their, their stories. I think that was like a big piece that we were wanting to do, wanting to connect, um, connect youth to, to that type of knowledge and, and inspiration, I think, for, is one thing that definitely comes to mind. Um, yeah. What, what would you add, Alex? For the, the camp that we have now the, with the Science Futures model, um, one of the big things I think we wanted to address was when the IHPP was being um, created, um, consultation kind of led to, you know, discussions that, you know, Indigenous students tend to lose, there's a dip in their interest in science courses. And you know, this is for a number of reasons, both systematic, it could be, you know, at a community level, um, the idea of how Western colonial kind of thinking doesn't really work in an Indigenous context sometimes. And there are just so many, like, roots to this problem. But one of the things that we wanted to try and do with this camp by including that science element was to tackle something like science, but from an indigenous point of view. So if you notice in the video, a lot of the science teachings, actually all of them are rooted in indigenous ways of thinking. Um, and this is for one to make the content more relatable for students, but we also want them to relate more with the content. We want them to be able to see, you know, themselves reflected in the curriculum that they're learning. And oftentimes, you know, if you identify with something that you're learning about, chances are you're going to, it's going to foster more interest. And this is something that, you know, uh, we've maintained, um, I think, the two, out of the two models now that we've done for the Eagle Spirit Science Futures. And it's going to be nice to see, you know, in a couple of years time, you know, what those kind of seeds being planted are going to lead to. Yeah, I think offering an opportunity too for the youth to get out of their communities and, and see what's out there and meet other youth and kind of create a, a positive experience where, yeah, you're kind of out of the classroom, not always thinking about like, what, what is in my future? What, you know, what's my future job going to be? But it's just trying to be, trying to show them that you know, it's, it's, it's a learning experience and there's a lot of different opportunities out there, right? Um, so I think it's like that, to me, I think it was that exposure to, to new experiences, creating memories and positive associations with, with university um, or school and, and that type of learning too. Yeah, thank you. Thank you both for that. And, and Alex, as you were talking, and what, what really struck in my mind was, or came to my mind, was that a lot of Indigenous knowledge is actually science knowledge. It's scientific knowledge, and it's just never framed like that, you know, uh, and it's not taught like from that perspective in the Quebec curriculum or mo probably most other uh, provinces as well. So just highlighting that for the uh, for the youth I'm hoping can really stimulate an idea that yeah maybe I can do this uh, in high school maybe in Seja maybe university I just need to think of it in a different way so uh, that really uh, sticks out for me so uh, thanks to both of you um, I do have a question um, for for Paige um, can you tell us a little bit about the transition with the camp when, when you first took it over and what were some of the challenges that you had to deal with and then later on with, you know, what you were trying to do with the academy? Yeah, well, I, I would say the the transition from, yeah, Winique running the camp and I think there was even, uh, I think Courtney Montour actually organized a, a camp in between me. Like, so when I was uh, uh, just starting out, at McGill, like working at McGill. Yeah, you know, I think, I don't know, like I was 25, I didn't have a whole lot of like experience <laughs> running a camp. And I think, you know, with Winique's background being an Olympian, like a motivational speaker, I think there was a lot of pressure. I felt a lot of pressure to be like, all right, can I do this, you know? But I think, you know, I was enthusiastic about doing it. I thought it was really important and, and and was ready to kind of get my hands dirty and and get this camp going for the for the youth. Um, uh, but in terms of transitions, like I think 
when I first started running the camp, I think there was a really good framework and base there, right? That, you know, when he can kind of organize it a few years, worked out some kinks, you know, we, we knew what worked. And then, you know, we were able to, you know, problem solve and try, try different things. Um, and then, yeah, I think it was just like surrounding yourself with key people at the university who are willing to help. And there was always people willing to help. And so I kind of took on anyone's help, <laughs> which was, you know, which is really good. And then when I was handing it off to Jessica, I think that was the easiest because like, you know, she had so many ideas and I loved them all. And I was very confident and knew that, you know, she was bringing in new energy and into it. And, and I knew it was going to, I knew it was going to be in good hands. Even with Alex, I remember being in the city and, you know, coming, stopping by and, and seeing you with the youth. And I was like, oh yeah, he's got this. Yeah. All right. Great. I'm going to like, I'm going to step back. <laughs> it was a, a really easy transition at the end. I remember. <laughs> yeah. Okay, good. Uh, thank you so much, Paige. I do have a, a question for Alex, but I'm seeing we do have another question in the chat. Um, so this comes from uh, Samir. And hi, Samir. Glad you could join us. Indigenous leadership is so important in this project. For those of us who are settlers or non-Indigenous, specifically in the Faculty of Medicine and Health Sciences at McGill, can we help in terms of knowledge sharing? I think, um, you know, the, the experience of Eagle Spirit is very much a woven, it, it, it's a woven uh, entity. What I mean by that is there's that Indigenous point of view, but it's woven in with really that, you know, the university element. Um, you know, the camp can only be as strong as, you know, the people that um, we've worked with and the people we continue to work with. And that includes the, you know, the health professional programs that are, we're partnered with at this university. So for people who, you know, want to support this idea of, you know, uh, knowledge sharing, um, one of the big parts of the camp is really the hands-on learning aspect. And that's completely facilitated by um, the schools at McGill that we work with. And so I think that, um, you know, by getting the word out to more people, you know, at the faculty level or even student level, um, that we have these activities and we need volunteers to be able to you know, do them so that the kids can be able to really see what it is to learn um, or even to you know, understand what these professions are. I think really getting involved in that sense. And I think uh, if I'm understanding the question correctly, but that last part in terms of um, indigenous leadership being important in this project, um, it, it's, it's definitely, I think it, it's, um, it helps us for the fact that Indigenous peoples are involved with it like at every stage, whether it's the planning, um, the counselors, sometimes even the facilitators of certain events, having Indigenous people involved at all stages of it has really helped us to make the project what it is today. Great, thank you, Alex. There is one more question. We, our time is just about up, which I, I will try to answer that last question in a very short period of time, and then we're gonna conclude. The question is, is there a program uh, or a structure in place to maintain contact with the camp participants and support them further? And one of the things we've tried to do with the Indigenous Health um, Professions Program is a program called Electronic Tutoring and Mentoring. And so we offer to keep in touch with, uh, with the camp, uh, with the campers through electronic means with a current McGill student. Sometimes it's an Indigenous student, sometimes it's a non-Indigenous student, and try to maintain relationship without, uh, throughout the year to try to keep mentoring and actually help them tutoring with some of their schoolwork if they, if they needed to be. Um, so uh, th that is one thing that we are trying to do. It is a bit of a struggle, especially once they leave the camp, but uh, we are trying hard to keep them, uh, uh, keep them on board with us. Perhaps a reunion is in order. Maybe it is. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, so um, our time is up. That concludes today's event. Thank you, everyone, uh, for taking part. A huge thank you to Wanik, uh, to Paige and Alex for sharing with us their wonderful memories about the Eagle Spirit Camp and their insights about its uh, legacy and impact. On behalf of everyone at the Indigenous Health Professions Program, I'd also like to thank everyone who has helped create, fund, and run this camp over the years. 
we do have some core funding from the gill but you know we are always looking for donors to help us out and to expand our program as well so many thanks to everyone to our donors uh, to the uh, indigenous health professions program and some of uh, whom are virtually with us today thank you to everyone for making eagle spirit science futures camp a possibility and for supporting the indigenous health professions program good night everyone have a wonderful evening and stay safe thank you very much